everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Office Hours with Jess. Today, I will be talking to you all about dissertation defense prep. The reason why I'm choosing to focus on this um, is because I'm in the thick of this right now. I'm actually going to be defending my dissertation in exactly two and a half weeks. Um, so I'm very nervous, very anxious about this, um, but also doing my best to try to manage this time. And I thought I'd share with you all some things that I'm doing right now. But before I dive in, I do want to say congrats. If you're at this stage where you're preparing for your defense day, you've made it. Like everyone keeps telling me, you know, the defense is sort of just this fluffy event where we just celebrate your work. Although it's still an exam, I don't know why they say it that way. There's still anxiety associated with that exam piece. Um, but the fact that you, you know, you're preparing for it, you have it on the calendar, it means you, you're there. So congrats. Um, and just remember to keep that in mind as, um, you know, the anxiety might start to go up and down during this process. So my first tip for you all um, is about scheduling. So pick your date early, like try to get it on your calendars for your committee members as soon as possible. Your committee members, your professors are so busy. And sometimes it can be really hard to nail down that like one and a half, two hour window that all of your committee members can be in person um, in one place. Uh, I think I scheduled my like we penciled in the date back in September of 2022 and then finalized like the date time location everything in December um, and then now it's happening in February so well almost like half a year we put it on the calendar also there's probably some logistics that your school might require um, for me, I had to actually like request the room um, and also put in an IT request to set up because I wanted a Zoom, uh, people to be able to Zoom in um, from outside and make it hybrid. Um, so getting the IT all set up and making sure you have all of that set up, super important to make sure you have that done ahead of schedule because that's not stuff you want to be worrying about the week of or the day of. And then of course, as soon as you know, you want to start inviting your colleagues your friends, your classmates, and your family. Um, like my parents chose to fly in. And if that's something that, um, you know, your family members might want to do too, that's also something you'll want to plan in advance of. Now, next is practicing. So I think this is like the really the key thing. And the only really thing that you can do um, is to practice with other people and um, put it on the calendar, schedule it and try to do it regularly, maybe like once or twice a week, a couple of weeks leading up, just so that, you know, when you get up on stage that day or in front of that room, wherever you might be doing your defense, you know, you it feels familiar, you've done it before, and um, you're not like flying through your slides for the first time. It's also really helpful because these people can give you really constructive feedback in a very sort of low stakes environment, obviously, because you're just practicing um, with people you know. So this is the time to be fixing stuff, making tweaks to your slides, making them look better um, before the actual day. It's also helpful um, to have your friends or whoever you practice with help you brainstorm questions that you might get asked. Um, you're just, I feel like for me, like I'm so tunnel vision with my dissertation now. I've been so absorbed like it's nice to have like an outside person be like hey have you thought of this um to kind of just get you in the mindset to be ready to answer questions that you might not expect and also just to get people from other disciplines to see like what sticks out in your work whatnot um so yes use them to help brainstorm questions because that is the biggest the more stressful part of the defense i think is the questioning portion which we'll get to in a moment um, if you have the opportunity to do so, if you have like a research group, a lab, um, I would practice um, in front of them, in front of like a group of people, not just like one-on-one -on -one or on Zoom. Like for me next week, I'm going to be practicing with my fellowship group, which includes a mix of a couple faculty, postdocs, and um, fellow students. Um, so that I'm, all, I'm already a little bit nervous about that. So it's helping me, you know, just practice and get over that fear. And of course, you know, rely on your friends for support during this time. Um, I've had so many people ask me, you know, what can I do to help you right now? And I'm like, honestly, just giving me the encouragement, reminding me that everything's going to be okay um, is also just very helpful in a time like this. 
Now, again, the questioning portion. So um, again, I feel like, you know, you usually give that research talk or the talk at the beginning and the exam part where your committee asks you questions. I feel like that's usually the stressful part of the defense uh, and the part that I'm the most stressed about and that I've been trying to come up with creative ways to prepare for. So these are things that I've been doing. So one, um, I've been looking back at old notes from my that I've taken during my committee meetings leading up to now, um, just to see like, oh yeah, you know, one of my members mentioned this, like they might want to ask that kind of similar question again, just to kind of remember your line of thinking. Um, hopefully, you know your committee members well enough to be able to anticipate, you know, their personality, what kind of questions they like to ask, that kind of stuff. So it's good to sort of refresh your memory on that and be prepared. And kind of along that same line, I've also taken it even a step further and I've combed through all of my comments from the drafts of my three dissertation papers because I've circulated those multiple times to all of my committee members in the process of getting them ready for publication. Um, so looking just through all the track changes in the comments and being like, oh yeah, you know, one of my committee members said this or made a comment here about a limitation, whatnot. I wrote all of those up and took notes um, and compiled them into a document that I'll probably review um, every so often between now and the defense day. And then I would say um, your questions will kind of come in two camps. One is methods. So make sure you understand the methods that you used in your dissertation well and are able to elaborate on that. Um, I'm in more of a social science, social behavioral sciences. So I don't know how deep they're going to go into the epidemiology and the statistics, but at least be ready to answer questions about, again, the methods, the regressions you ran, the models, why you included certain covariates, you know, the estimates, anything with the standard errors, like all of that, just make sure you're ready. Um, and then on the other side, kind of taking a step back, um, you'll also likely be asked a lot of questions about the implications of your findings. Like, what does this mean for your field, for future research, for interventions, for policy, et cetera? Um, so be ready to answer both sort of the nitty gritty and the big picture questions. I made a similar slide like this in my interview prep um, video, um, but the night before and even the week before, I would say leading up to your defense, Try to take it easy, relax, get a good night's sleep, eat a good meal and do what you need to do to get in the right mindset for the day of. And that kind of transitions me um, to sort of my overall tips, my general tips for preparing. And to again, remind you that if you've gotten to this point, you know your stuff. No one knows your dissertation more than you do. None of your committee members, not even your committee members combined, know your dissertation more than you do. Um, so with that, like I said, make sure that you take it easy. I'm like saying this and I'm trying to like remind myself to be doing this right now too. This this slide is a reminder for me as well to be doing these things um, leading up to my defense in two and a half weeks. But you know your stuff. So don't feel like you have to like cram stuff in, the, in those last few moments. Um, breathe and just know it will come to you. Um, I've thought of doing this as like rereading my dissertation papers um, and just, just remember, you know, some of the things I wrote um, because, you know, the questions they ask you will all be in the scope of what you've written for your dissertation. And especially with helping you think of like the greater implications of your findings, you know, remembering why it is that you chose to pursue some of your research questions to begin with, and then rereading those discussion sections to see kind of how it, you know, draws upon current findings, other findings, future research. Um, and just a good reminder, some good bedtime reading, maybe the couple of um, days leading up to your final moments of preparation. Um, it's also good to just get advice from recent grads. Um, I chose not to go and attend other dissertations and other departments. I thought about doing that to be like, oh, let me see what a dissertation might be like um, for someone else. Oh, I guess that leads me to my next point. But everyone's defense experience is different. And I didn't want to like go to someone's defense and 
see them get asked a bunch of questions and think I'll get asked those questions because it really just depends on like, honestly, the mood that your committee members are in that day um, and who's on your committee, obviously, um, what kind of questions you might get asked. Um, but yeah, I did get advice from some recent grads about just like hearing how their defense went and just hearing that they made it through um, and it wasn't perfect, which brings me to my last point here. And this is something my advisor has emphasized to me, uh, but you do not need to be perfect to pass. Like you don't have to know the answer to every single question that gets thrown at you. Your committee can recommend changes or edits, um, but that won't bar you from passing as well. Like this is, you're not, you know, it's not like any small thing will, you know, get in the way. Um, overall, you've done the work, you've written everything up, you're there. This is just presenting it all and being able to defend your work and the questions you get asked. And it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, so I want to stress that as well. And I keep telling that to myself to help calm any of my fears um, that, you know, walk into my brain um, as I'm preparing. And that's everything. Um, so thank you. Um, I really wish you all good luck. I'm wishing myself good luck as I make this video. And again, um, it's a good reminder for myself for some practices to uphold um, these final two and a half weeks leading to my own defense. Um, the next time you see me on another episode of Office Hours with Jess, I'll probably be on the other side of that finish line. Um, so I look forward to then. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you on another episode of Office Hours with Jess. Thank you.